China dropped a bombshell on December 1st that sent every semiconductor executive scrambling for their phone. Beijing announced that any lithography equipment containing just 0.1% or more of Chinese rare earth materials now requires an export license from China, no matter where it's assembled or shipped. This isn't some bureaucratic footnote. This is China wielding a knife at the throat of the global chip industry, and the blade is aimed directly at ASML, the Dutch company that makes every advanced semiconductor possible. But to understand why this matters, you need to rewind to September 30th, 2025, when the Netherlands made what might be the most expensive mistake in European industrial history. Without warning, without evidence, without even a hearing, Amsterdam's Court of Appeal seized Nexperia, a Chinese-owned semiconductor company. They removed the Chinese CEO Zhang Shujing from his position, appointed a foreign executive, and transferred 99% of the company's shares to a third-party trust. The Dutch government claimed management deficiencies and economic security threats. But here's what they missed. Nexperia wasn't just any chip company. After Wingitec Technology acquired it in 2019 for $3.6 billion, it became the backbone of the global automotive chip supply. The company ships 110 billion chips every year. From Volkswagen to Toyota to Tesla, virtually every car rolling off assembly lines depends on Nexperia's components for brake control, lighting systems, and power modules. And here's the kicker. While the Netherlands thought they were seizing a valuable asset, over 70% of Nexperia's actual production capacity sits in Dunguan and Shanghai. The Dutch grabbed the paperwork while China kept the factories. Beijing's response was surgical. One week later, Chinese authorities issued export controls blocking Nexperia's Chinese facilities from shipping automotive semiconductors to Europe. Capacity utilization at those plants collapsed from 90% to under 10%. Delivery capability to European customers crashed from 95% to just 3%. The impact hit Europe like a freight train. Volkswagen's main plant in Wolfsburg shut down every production line, bleeding over $100 million per day. BMW's Munich facility watched delivery times for high-end models stretch from three months to six months. In just two weeks, European automakers lost more than $3.5 billion in output, while 12,000 workers faced layoffs or reduced hours. Honda announced shutdowns at multiple North American plants, with one Ontario, Canada factory cutting capacity in half. The data is brutal. 86% of Europe's key industrial companies buy chips from Nexperia's Chinese facilities, and roughly one-third of automotive supply chain companies use Nexperia as their exclusive supplier. You can't just switch suppliers when automotive-grade certification takes months or years. By November 5th, the German Association of the Automotive Industry issued an ultimatum to the Netherlands, threatening to invoke Article 17 of the EU CHIPS Act to bypass Dutch control entirely. But that was just round one. The December 1st rare earth controls represent China's real leverage, and this targets the crown jewel of Dutch industry. ASML makes the only machines on earth capable of printing chips at the most advanced nodes. These extreme ultraviolet lithography machines cost up to $200 million each, and every single one depends completely on Chinese rare earth materials. China controls approximately 90% of global rare earth refining capacity, and ASML has no alternatives. The ultra-precise lenses that focus extreme ultraviolet light require cerium oxide polish to 99.9% .9 purity. Only Chinese refineries hit that standard consistently. American rare earth operations struggle to reach even 92.9% purity, nowhere close to what's needed. The magnetic systems inside these machines use over 10 kilograms of permanent magnets made from neodymium, dysprosium, and terbium. These magnets account for more than 30% of component costs in some systems, and China produces over 90% of global rare earth permanent magnets. When ASML tried replacing these with ordinary materials, Production costs jumped 40%, while performance dropped 30%. There are no viable alternatives. Southeast Asia's refining capacity represents less than 5% of the global total. U.S. rare earth mines face extraction and refining costs three times higher than China's. According to Roger Dawson, ASML's chief financial officer, the company maintains enough rare earth inventory to sustain production for approximately eight weeks. After that buffer runs out, if Chinese export licenses get delayed or denied, ASML could see monthly output decline by 15 to 20 machines. 
With each machine representing hundreds of millions in revenue, annual losses could exceed $3 billion. But the damage cascades far beyond ASML. The company supplies lithography equipment to Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company, Samsung, Intel, and virtually every major chipmaker on the planet. These companies produce processors for Apple, NVIDIA, AMD, Qualcomm, and the entire technology ecosystem. A disruption at ASML doesn't just hurt one company. It threatens the entire global semiconductor supply chain that powers everything from smartphones to artificial intelligence to military systems. The rare earth compounds ASML imports from China each year account for 26.4% of China's total rare earth exports. This isn't a minor dependency. This is a chokehold. The timing reveals the strategy. Starting December 2024, the United States placed Wingy Tech Technology on the entity list, attempting to crack down on China's semiconductor industry. Then on September 29, 2025, just one day before the Netherlands seized Nexperia, the U.S. Department of Commerce issued a piercing rule expanding sanctions to include all subsidiaries where blacklisted companies hold more than 50% ownership. This immediately cut off Nexperia's ability to purchase key equipment and technologies. The Netherlands clearly believed that with U.S. backing, they could pull off this seizure smoothly. They were catastrophically wrong. China's message is clear. If Western nations want to restrict China's access to advanced chip-making technology, Beijing will restrict access to the raw materials needed to build that technology in the first place. It's economic judo, using your opponent's dependencies against them. The October 9th announcement included another devastating clause requiring case-by-case -case approval for any equipment used in producing logic chips at 14 nanometers and below, memory chips at 256 layers and above, and related materials. This directly targets the most advanced semiconductor manufacturing processes that define technological leadership. China spent three decades consolidating dominance over rare earth mining, processing, magnet production, and downstream component manufacturing. Chinese state-backed entities now control roughly 89% of global rare earth refining and nearly every aspect of high-performance magnet supply chains. Meanwhile, Western efforts to diversify remain years away from meaningful scale. In July 2025, the U.S. Department of Defense invested $400 million into MP materials, making the government the largest shareholder in the only operational rare earth mine in the United States. But industry experts warn the U.S. won't be anywhere near self-sufficient within a year. Building alternative rare earth supply chains takes 10 to 15 years and billions in capital investment. The European Union's Critical Raw Materials Act aims to produce 7,000 tons of rare earth magnets domestically by 2030, 